In this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to create these amazing scatter brushes for your illustration work. So I've created these brushes recently. I made some sippling brushes in my other tutorial, but I also made some little sponge scatter brushes we can play around with. And obviously this is experimental, but you can create some really interesting effects. So first up, I've dragged the image into Photoshop. I'm going to just cut these down. So you can crop by pressing C, and then I'm just dragging these sides there to get just these ones that I wanna focus on. So what I can actually do, I wanna bump up the level, so I'm gonna press so what I want to do is actually make these black and white. So I'll go to image mode and make it grayscale up the top left as you can see. And this will make everything black and white. I'm also going to bump up the levels a little bit. So you can see I can increase the blacks and I can grab the highlights and bring them down, which is really cool. And this is going to help us when we vectorize it to help us scan it in. So I'm just going to, you know, bring this up. The mid-tones I can play around with but typically you want to make sure that there's no gray or anything so just play around and then once you're happy just press ok and then what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go to image mode and turn it into a bitmap so you go to the top left click bitmap which is totally cool and this should get rid of all the gray and just make it all black which is great so what I can actually do from this is I can actually save for web and just save it as a JPEG would be fine. I'm going to just, you know, save it at 50%. I'm just going to save it to the desktop really quickly. And I'm going to drag and drop that into my Illustrator file. And you can see here, I've got this cool little pumpkin here. And we might, we're going to play around with these textures and see what we can do with it. So first up, what you want to do is you want to select the textures and you want to go to the top left and click image trace. This will start to process the brushes and make them into vector shapes, which is really cool. I'm just going to move some of these things out the way. So you can see already we've started to get some shape, but obviously it needs some tweaking. So go to the left top left and click the little white box. I'm going to drag this box over here, click on advanced, and we want to play with the threshold bar. This will sort of increase how many, how much detail or shapes there are. And if I bring that up, you can see there'll be more detail as you can see there. So play around with that and see what works well. I'm also going to play with the paths and increase the paths a little bit, around 80%. And the corners, if you want to have a round, more rounded textures, then bring the corners to make it less. So you can see it's more round. If I bring the corners up, you'll see it will be more sharper and square, as you can see. So it just depends what you want. I like the sort of the circular organic feel. And then with the noise, if I bring the noise up, it's going to increase the overall, you know, um, it will make less detail and make it more simple. But if I bring the noise down, it should make more detail as you can see there. So I'll bring it to one pixel. And keep in mind, if your computer is not that good, it might lag a little bit. So just keep in mind when creating these textures. So some of the textures look really cool. I might bring the threshold down to see what it does to some of this detail. Which is really awesome and I think that will do and obviously if it doesn't look good then that's fine we can always remake them so I'm gonna press expand but before we do that make sure you tick on ignore white to get rid of any white parts in the actual image and then click expand and now we have all these shapes I'm gonna select the group and press Control shift G to ungroup you can go to object and actually ungroup from this as well as you can see and I'm just going to select the ones that I want so I can group this one, group this, delete any excess around. Like if you see like any details, you can actually delete, start to delete stuff if you want. You can make this a group and I'll just start to group them all by themselves to each one. So there we have it. Now what we want to do is we want to open our brush panel. I want to quickly delete all these brushes here by going to select all unused and clicking the, the recycling bin. And that should delete all those brushes. I'm going to make everything right so you guys can see. If you don't know how to open the brush panel, you go to window and you click on brushes. So in order for us to make a brush, all I have to do is drag the one that I want. So maybe I want this one. I just drag it and drop it into the brush panel. And we want to make a scatter brush. I can name these scatter brushes so I can call it brush one. Maybe call it thick. 
And typically I like to have the colorization on hue shift so I can change the color of the actual brush. And you've got sizing, spacing, and scatter. So you can always play around with this. Typically um, I play around with the spacing and scatter and that keeps it cool. It's on fix, but if you have a stylus wheel or a Wacom tablet, you can use by pressure and that will actually affect how the how it works. So for now, I'm just going to press OK to do a quick test. I'll press B for the brush tool, select my brush and start to sketch. So you can see how the brush looks like, but it's not really feeling how I want it to. So I'll go to my brush panel, double click on my brush that I just made. And I'll start to play with the scatter a bit. So you can see if you do it heaps far, it'll just go everywhere. So you want to be careful when you're doing the scatter brush. You sort of just want to go a little bit minus. The spacing, I like to have it close by, not too far. So you want to have it sort of in a place where it can be consistent. You can actually rotate and it'll actually rotate some of the, the brush there, which is cool. And then the size, you can actually adjust the sizing as well if you've made the, the brush too big. So I can drop that down. Then I press OK. And then now what you want to do. And then once you're happy with that, you press apply to strokes and it should apply to your brush and it will save those presets now. So now I can brush around as you can see there. Now my brush is looking really cool. I can also use the brush for shapes. You know, if I have a star, I can make that over here and use that as well. So that one is a one way to create that. If you have, you can see I just added the stroke by accident. Let's try and make another one. So maybe this one over here, this one looks a little bit different. Scatter brush, same thing, drop the spacing, scatter a little bit, and that's fine. Change the color to hue shift. And then now, see what that looks like. So I need to make the spacing a little bit more tighter. Make sure your preview button is on so you can check that. So that's looking kind of cool. Click apply. And now we have this brush. Just delete the paths that you create because this creates a path. And I think that is working really well. Beautiful. So let's start to apply that brush that we just made onto the pumpkin. So what I like to do is I just like to ungroup everything and I like to use these individual shapes. So I've got this shape on the side and then what I can do is Get, grab my brush tool, press B, and using my mouse, I can sketch like that. I can sketch like that. And now I've made that. You can see the spacing is a bit off, so I might have to adjust that. The spacing is too much. Oh. And I'm just going to change the color so I can see what I'm doing. And I can see that the scatter is just too much, so I'm just going to go 0%. That's beautiful. And I'm going to drop the stroke size. So you can drop the stroke to like 0.5 or even 0.25 is cool as well. Right. And then what I'm going to do is make a clipping mask. So I've got this shape here, as you can see. Bring it to the front by going object, arrange, bring to front. I'm obviously using the shortcut keys, which is fine. And I'm going to select the path. As you can see, the green line, that's the path of this brush. Hold shift, select this and press F3. For me, F3 is the clipping mask. If you don't have that shortcut, you go object, clipping mask make, which is control seven. And then now what I can do, I can select this shape. I can open my transparency panel and like play around with this. So I can go multiply. I can change it, maybe overlay, which looks awesome. Soft light, which looks awesome as well. And I can do the same for the other side as well. So you can see it makes a lot of difference. I'll select this, I'll get my eyedropper and I'll plus the other one so it copies the same um, size. Get this shape and then I'll press F3 for my shortcut. I can always go in here and edit the texture as well so move them inside that shape. So we'll change that soft light 50% and we should be sweet. So you can see that we're starting to get some really cool textures in there. It looks amazing. Obviously, you're not going to have to zoom in fully. So from a far distance, it looks very nice and, nice and grainy. 
which is super awesome. Let's try and make a little bit of a highlight for the top bit. I just want to drop the size down. Sometimes you got to really check the sizing. And maybe I can make this like a white color. Make that white and maybe you can do like an overlay. Beautiful. Press Control C, Control left to make a duplicate of this shape of the little pumpkin stem. And then I'm going to use F3, my shortcut to make that. And that looks amazing. It's just white and it's got overlay on it on this thing, the brush. It's at 100% and that looks amazing. Let's try and make a little bit more. And let's, we can probably make a different brush if we want. But I'm going to do like a big one. I, like, I want to make this a big size. Let's try the other one like this. And then I'm going to duplicate the bottom base. Make a clipping mask. And I can drop the opacity down. Maybe 40. And I can also play around with like screen, color dodge, overlay. They all look good. As you can see there. And we've got this cool looking pumpkin. Amazing. Let's maybe add a little bit more. We've got this like fingerprint thing, but I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> um, but maybe we want to add, maybe this one, this is kind of cool. Maybe I don't even want to add a brush for this, but let's just make a brush, scatter brush. Spacing. And this one's going to be for the background. So I'm going to drop it behind. I'm going to make a circle, like an oval for the back. Make sure you apply the brush to the stroke and not the fill, like this. I'm going to change the color with the eyedropper tool to the background. And then I'm going to go see what we can create. Make sure that it's applied there. It's on multiply and it's at the background color. And now you can see this scatter brush is actually used as a background, which is really cool. And there we have it. We've made our scatter brushes. And they are looking amazing, great for illustrations, great for design work, or even adding texture to a logo if you have to. But this is how you create your own scatter brushes, just using simple paint, simple techniques, and you can have a really great effect, and it's all for free. So thanks guys for watching, really hoped you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you love this type of tutorials. Remember to like and subscribe for more design content every week, and I hope you have a great week.